What are you showing me? This is the way to live. Was it say Donkey Kong? No, it's 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 the Metroid. I can't read it. It's fuzzy. I'm assuming that's Mario World. Just got a, just got a little little device. We just play Metroid Zero Mission. Uh, whenever I feel like it. People certainly experienced with Metroid Zero Mission because I kind of did a speed run on this channel that one time. That's I I I'm, I take pride in that particular run. That's a, I feel really good about that. It took a lot of work. I feel really good about it. Uh, I think it's a I think it's a pretty good watch. I think watching watching Zane play through it and then having me just get in and fucking speed run the shit out of it and fucking episode and a half. I think it, I think it's good. I think it's a good video I did. I don't I I take pride in certain things that I've done, but that one I, I really think that's one of my better videos. I also like the Mega Man X video a lot. I, I really, I wish I could play Mega Man X on my fucking little Game Boy Micro here. I'd like that a whole awful lot. They should, should I only, I can only play the Mega Man Zero games. Fucking Zero is a punk ass bitch. I don't fucking want to play no goddamn fucking anime fuckboy Zero game. I fucking want to be Mega Man X. I want to fucking fight, fight the Mavericks. I don't fucking I want to bother with that Reploid bullshit. I want to just fucking. Iris, Iris, no, no, this cannot be happening. What? No, there is no reason for me to go on. Why am I fighting for? Bullshit, fucking, <coughs> fucking bullshit! I just want to fucking charge up my fucking Buster Cannon, and I want to, I want to, want to, want to fucking kill Sigma. That's all I want to fucking do. I'm playing as fucking Mega Man's girlfriend right now. Uh, here we are. This is the uh, the final major category before we get to kind of our mop up zone that I might yeah, just put all into one zone, episodes. The broom uh, closet. But, but this is it. This is the, Splash zone. the best game of the year. This is what you've all been waiting for. Um, obligatory shortening to top five because only one of these four people had 10 games. Um, and that's fine. He's not upset about it at all. Hey, I could have done ten. I played over ten games. Yeah, but we like that. You got to You want it to matter. Yeah, I don't so, want to just shout out every game I played. I played. I, played I mean, I 18, could do that. And still I not played eighteen 10. games. Shout out to Wario. We're get it together. Death's Door, Loop Hero, Returnal, Mario Party Superstars, and Bowser's Fury. But number five. Um, None of us it, get shout outs. Fuck yeah, where's my shout out? Fuck, I'm yeah, pretty you, much Wario. You have fucking five games. <laughs> I've got nine. Yes. Number five. Same. Number five. Um, Burger King foot lettuce. Burger King foot lettuce. The eternal. <laughs> but number five is butter dog. I put the dog with the butter. Um, <laughs> the salami I, lid. <laughs> I feel like this is going to get brought up a little bit later. So I kind of feel a little bit bad just kind of ripping my Band-Aid off. And I think I'm okay with just ripping the Band-Aid off and I'm fine with getting to it later. But uh, you've heard it in a few categories now. But my number five game of the year is It Takes Two. Um, yeah, we'll definitely be talking about that later. Yeah. Yeah. It Takes Two was the first game I played this year that I knew was like, this is probably going to be in the top five and it also was my yardstick for the whole year was mm -hmm. every game is like this has to be better than it takes two to i think um be in kind of contention or like it has to be kind of right around there uh it takes two is the for, for what it's worth in terms of doing a top five it takes two is the worst one that i still very passionately like Whereas my like six through 10, it's like, yeah, these are good, but like it takes two. I fucking love, um, but I'm sure we're going to get into a bit. So I don't want to take up too much time with it being my number five, but Ryan, what is your number five? Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but I always like to shout out really <laughs> clever indie games that are, they're small or they're something really unique that I've never played anything like before. Uh, so my number five is going to go to unpacking. I was thinking, I was really hoping you were going to say call of duty. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> battlefield 2042 it just it does a lot of clever stuff um with like really good game design like it keeps everything really small so they're able to just pack a bunch of detail in there 
good writing unpack yeah exactly cool. they pack it in and you unpack it um yeah Stage. it's just a cool thing i think it's something that they could have very easily fallen into just like it, it could have been lame they could have not had a story in there and it wouldn't have hit quite as hard um but yeah it was a cool thing i've never played anything like it and they they sneakily made it like a, a puzzle game and all that stuff and not just like a unpacking simulator but good shit number five good shit number five um hunter yeah. um give me something give me a little bit of monica uh what is your number five little bit of monica in my life a yeah thank you that, that, is, in my that life. is the joke i was going for thank I you i need hunter. a little bit of monica in my life hi kai uh my number five is ender lilies never heard of it <laughs> yeah neither I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fuck with it <laughs> Probably. Just like you fucked with the rice patty game. Look, <laughs> look, listen to you little shit. Nobody else saw Game of the Year fucking 2020, so they don't know I'm committed to shit. Doesn't we should matter. explain what that game is, though, because every time Jason says it, it comes off as like, oh, wow, he's being really racist. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. <laughs> anyway. It is a game about growing rice. <laughs> Ender, also, Ender Lilies. The Minecraft game. A 2D action game. But yeah, it's mostly really detailed rice growing, and you can <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, Jason, what's your number Wait, you're not five? even gonna fucking. <laughs> I mean, I've, you, I've sang, talked... you spent more time singing Mambo number five than you talked about it. <laughs> Look, it was my Mambo number five of the year. I had to go into detail on it. But I mean, I've, I've kind of not really gushed isn't the right word, but I've gush, got it. Gush. Ish. I've gotten to detail every time I've brought it up, so I feel like at this point there's enough for it. It's twenty five dollars on my Nintendo Switch. Are you gonna do it? I don't think right now. Twenty five. It's not in a Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch OLED. That is true. It is an OLED yeah, Switch. Get it right or get it tight. Get it right. Ender Lilies. Oh, Ender Lilies is two words. Quietus of nights. Yeah. Jason, I mean, what's your Number if five, I don't buy Pokemon. I might buy that. Okay. Uh, shout out to my number six, Rash and Clank. It was fun, but it wasn't special enough. Um, my number five was barely a game, and I may not know as like I haven't like looked into it. There may be more information, but like I don't really know what the bigger picture plan is. If there's anything that's going to come from it. But my number five is the pack in for the my second favorite port. <laughs> Which um, is Bowser's Fury. Excuse me. It, it is the main draw of that package that happens <laughs> nah. to be bundled with an HD remaster of a Wii U game. See, I disagree because I bought it because I really have always wanted to play Mario 3D World. And then I played Bowser's Fury because it happened to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I never played it. Brian said something funny in the group chat. <laughs> um, you can read it out loud. I, uh, <laughs> I... I think Bowser's Fury is so fucking cool. It's my number oh, it, six. It is super cool. I'd like, have they said anything about like a plan that there's going to like, if it was like a preview it, of it a is, new thing they're going to do? It's or? clearly a prototype. Because it was and successful. It, I think like, people enjoyed themselves. Oh yeah. yeah. People seem to be really liking it. I like, I loved Mario Odyssey. I think what they did with Mario Odyssey, it's the best Mario game. It's maybe Odyssey the best 3D better. Mario game ever. Oh yeah. Mario Odyssey is better than Bowser's Fury, but I think if they iterate on Bowser's Fury, it could be better than Odyssey. Because I had some complaints about Bowser's Fury, but overall it was the idea is so enjoyable. good. Yeah. It, it works so fucking well. Um, but it was, yeah, I was, I was surprised by how fun it was. And it was like, I don't know, why does Mario all of a sudden just have stray cats? I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, yeah. The whole, the, the whole thing being weird cat themed is, is crazy. For no and, reason. Like, is there no, any history with cats? No, it's because it, it uses all of the assets from 3d world, which are all cat themed. Mm. And they introduced that power in 3D world. Yeah, the, the cat suit things of Mario. So it's yeah, like, it, made Mario furry in that one. Yeah, it, it works in that sense because literally they're just using these other assets for this new thing. 
Um, you know, Bowser's Fury was very enjoyable. I would play a full length version of it that's oh, yeah. a little more dialed in because it, it it had some stuff I didn't like. I feel like there was a little bit too much just like swimming around. Yeah, like I, I, didn't I would need to do. I would love for them to like fill the in between sections the way like Mario Odyssey has, which is kind of like mm. the, the crazy weird moons all over the place. I, mm. I, I'm not necessarily in the camp of like make everything open world since Breath of the Wild happened, but also all of these games going open world are largely working since Breath of the Wild happened. Um, doing a fucking open Mario Golf. Doing a fucking open zone Sonic game. Like, fuck, I'm gonna fuck with that. It's gonna be so fuck. weird. Bowser's fuck. Fury was actually oh, the a Sonic prototype Dash is caught for the, the Sonic next Robo cycle. Custom Robo. Look, man, Mania was so good. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I love Bowser's Fury. It's like a weird prototype tech demo, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's, it's like I barely feel like I can count it as an actual game on my list. But I mean, I guess there are games that I've played that are their own game that cost twenty dollars that were probably shorter than that. Yeah, I, I really hope they iterate on that. It's not just a weird one-off thing, but also it's Nintendo, baby. No rules, right? Like, it. I wouldn't I... even be kind of surprised <laughs> if they just like never talked about it again and they don't do anything with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if give us Odyssey too. It wouldn't surprise me if it was pretty much just like them getting making their developers make an open world thing just to get used to it, and they're like, you know what, this is good enough. Let's we'll just tack it onto this. Or I we'll wonder just, if or Nintendo we'll has a rule in, about we'll like adding like a, something to the remasters, <laughs> like they did with the uh, the Mario and Luigi's. To. Yeah, like they. The old, I mean, it's also it's it's a. So this is maybe a little too inside baseball, but like it is in the reason why Nintendo doesn't do more HD remakes is because they don't believe that that is a meaningful like upgrade to a game. Where it's like that's not a meaningfully new experience. Um, so they generally speaking will only do remasters if they are like either tweaking or changing or twisting something like Pikmin having the fucking motion controls. Um, it, it, they don't like just doing an HD remaster of a game that that's not within their design philosophy as being like a meaningful addition to a game especially a game that's not that old i mean the wii u ones it's not like it was 15 years ago like when they put well like when they put mario 64 out again it also really sucks when nintendo does such a bad job preserving their old games um but that's neither here nor there what do you Um, mean switch n64 is the best way look i'm fucking mad about thousand year door god damn it i'm never gonna get off this fucking horse but whatever (laughs) My number four is not Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, although it fucking could be. Um, so I like twin stick shooters. Um, I'm, they're certainly not my favorite genre, um, but I like twin stick shooters. Um, a few years ago, I played a really, really good twin stick shooter. Astro. Got a, I've got a big old, got a big old box for it over here. A game called Assault Android Cactus. Um, it, it's a really, really fun just twin stick shooter game you, you play as these different like android girls and uh, they've got like different powers like basically like different ults you can pop but other than that it's a pretty standard uh twin stick shooter i was engaged in a high score race for a contest for a while and briefly uh did hold the uh, highest rank in it that was that was kind of fun for a little bit but i eventually got passed but this studio um decided to do something completely different this year and made a game about unpacking some fucking boxes and what's what's the game called it's called unpacking (laughs) some fucking boxes and this is a game that i had not heard about but it just kind of dropped onto uh, game pass one day and it's 20 dollars list and fucking worth every penny but i'm like oh you know what that sounds like a kind of a quaint little idea i'm gonna fuck with that and holy shit um there are there's a specific like tier or like design of games where i see it and i so desperately wish i had thought of that um and fuck deus ex fuck prey fuck all the 0451 games let me fucking tell you about environmental storytelling um the things that unpacking does is the fact like the way it is able to tell entire story. And I know I got into this on the story and writing thing, but the way that it is able to do what it does completely wordlessly forming just like an emotional connection with these characters, understanding what they've been through, understanding their arcs 
like from a pure design standpoint, I've never seen anything like this in a game. Mm -hmm. Um, It is absolutely, it's incredible. Not only that they did it, but that they actually completely landed the idea and pulled it off. So like, not only is this a game I really, really enjoyed and recommend to people, but I respect it in absolute spades. Um, It is so good. It is, it it is, it is incredible from a design perspective, the things they do with the sound, all of like just the little touches they do with it the ways that like not being able to hang your diploma on your boyfriend's wall, having to put it under the bed, just the little tiny things it does. They're so affecting doing it wordlessly. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I like it takes two. Don't get me wrong, but like unpacking was on another level. And for being like a three hour, like little game about just fucking putting shit around a room. um, I cannot believe it is as good as it is. I am absolutely in awe of what they were able to make. Yeah. I I thought it was really cool. I think it's definitely like it's like a new thing. It still kind of fits in like almost that almost like a walking simulator. Yeah, kind, kind of, of. Or like thing. a visual novel esque thing. But not quite. Like it is yeah. entirely its own thing that I would not have expected from that studio. Because I also yeah. played Assault Android Cactus and it's based it's all it's practically like an arcade game. Yeah. And yeah, it's fine. I I think you like yeah, it more a, than I did. It's but, an okay. It's a, but yeah, it's, it's a like good... it's like a twin stick shooter arcade thing. How are like how are they doing this now? Like yeah, crazy. It's it's unbelievable. Um, I I will like that is a new like I'm gonna shill that game until they pack me in a fucking box. Um, mm-hmm. Ship you off. I I until you're not... raggedy like a pig. You know what? I just I don't want to like fucking keep harping on because I know I talk a lot on the, on the story and writing, so I, I'll just move on. Hunter or no Ryan, you're next. Me. Hello. What is your number four? Um. Well, you brought up a twin stick shooter, which I think is perfect. So my favorite twin stick shooter this year uh, was Halo Infinite. I am so angry. <laughs> you can't do that after Jason did that last time. What I did. You can't get my hopes up like that. Why, what twin stick shooter did you think I was talking about? I mean, I'm just saying, Jason, when Jason did it, his was near. Oh. <laughs> so, like, don't invoke falsifying some fucking shit there. Boy, I wasn't lying. I know. Mine was just a really awesome bit. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Halo a really Infinite. Good bit. <laughs> uh, no, Halo 4. It's good. Halo, Halo is... Infinite. Halo Infinite. You said Halo 4. Oh, whatever. Yeah, let's, Halo 6. Let's not give that game any awards. <laughs> Halo 4 Infinite. Halo uh, may as well be Halo Four, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, Halo Infinite, just Halo's back, baby. I love, I love Halo. Like that was my, that might have been like still the game that I've put the most time into is Halo Three, and just being able to hop back in and play another Halo is really fun. Uh, yeah, I mostly, I mostly grunts. just done the, yeah, I mostly just done the campaign, Yay. but the campaign is fun. The whole game, just kill grunts. Yeah, <laughs> but I like it. I think moving to the open world thing was cool um yeah just cool game i think all the scenarios are set up really nicely uh, i should probably do more multiplayer but this is strictly from a campaign standpoint uh my number four and that's all we're going to be talking about halo infinite so nobody yep. can actually say anything after this yep, it's true off. it's over that's it if you don't say it now you missed your chance so hunter your turn my number four is it takes two Good game. Good game. Oh, two. Some oh, might four. call it the fifth best game. Sorry, it takes four. <laughs> <laughs> it takes the number four slot here on the Game of the Year podcast. <laughs> Are we just holding our It Takes Two until whatever the last one is? Probably. Okay. I guess. It Unless, I don't know. To... Do you guys have anything else to say about it? We've been kind of gushing about it. I guess, yeah, it. that's I, 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 that's honestly a good point. Other, I mean, I can just kind of yell about a game forever, but... And he will. That is oh, a I threat, will. folks. That is a oh, he's gonna he's gonna do a it promise in the next four category or four <laughs> rounds. He's gonna talk a bunch about a game that's bad. <laughs> and then talk bad things about games that are good. <laughs> we're getting some contenders for most divisive. I'm getting excited. I was I was a little worried Hunter and I were gonna have to fist fight about weeb shit. Just <laughs> <laughs> what's your uh, number four? My turn? Yeah, uh, my number four, I don't have much it's to say about it it's just a simply good quality game that looks pretty and is fun to be inside of and it's uh forza horizon 5 
or as some people who bug the shit out of me on the internet call it Forza Horizon 5. I don't <laughs> care if that's correct. It's, it's, the pronunciation is Fibza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if Forza has a T sound in it. I refuse to believe that that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah, Jason wants everyone to know he is not Italian. It can't be called Forza because you don't just drive around in a fort. A bobbity boobity. Born or George. I'm cooking the pizza. But no, Forza Horizon 5. I still haven't really played it that much, but I've seen it enough to be confident that it is good. It's visual, play more. visually, visually looks good. Play more cars are cars are fun. It's fun to drive a car fast down a runway. Don't feel good to drive a bus car. and then jump it off a <laughs> ramp. And then I jumping have, further I, than Dash did. Like I only have like four I'm or so five cars at that point. But no, it's it's good. I, I mean, I I'm sure it's going to come up again. I can't imagine it's not higher up on Dash's list. Maybe. And I didn't pay attention to a you six through ten. You don't fucking 10. know me. I didn't pay attention when Dash said a six through ten, so you I don't, don't know if you fucking know, <laughs> know me. Dash, it's your turn for your number three. Is it Forza? No, it's not. It's not. It's not Forza. Uh, so <laughs> my, I five. will say, I I had my four and my five fairly kind of like locked in, but once it came time to like actually do this, I probably swapped my one, two, and three once every few days. Um, and this is probably the longest I've gone without changing it. And even while we're talking, I've been like looking at it thinking like, eh, do I shuffle these around one more time? I'm just going to go to your tab and delete all of it. Don't you fucking dare go to my tab. <laughs> you fucking cheat. I'm already mad enough. That you copied my shit. I only copied your format. <laughs> Don't look at my tab. You looked, you looked at my shit. Look at my shit. That's not the purpose. It's, that's uh, why I write mine Google. down in a notebook. It's, it's a public Google doc. My Have you number not seen three my tab? is, yeah, I can, but I won't. My number three is Metroid Dread. Um, I know I have brought it up at least a few times already, and I'm not sure if there is a... I, I feel like I've kind of like hit the beats. I think that it is the best... I mean, I, I brought it up in, I guess, the surprise, but I think they made the best Metroid game. I think it is so many just like little things that I love, like the, the animations that Samus has, the tightness to the, like every, all the jumps and the running, just how fast the game is, which... I, I realize that like you, like speed running Metroid games is a thing, but like Metroid is the one that like always cares about doing the speed run shit because the 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 game timer kind of deter- determines your ending and shit. And just the amount of shit that they let you just go fast and run around the map and do all sorts of stuff, it just getting lost never feels that bad because I'm still getting to run around and jump around and be in that world. And I just love doing it. It's they carry over the thing from fucking the Metroid 2 remake where you get to like aim and shit, um, which was also in another Metroid 2 remake that is extremely good. Um, and it just all of it just feels so good. Like it's probably the best game feel of the year where I think that, it, you know, it's kind of the story's a little uh, the story's pretty weak and they do some dumb shit with the story. Uh, that'll be a running theme that we'll get to. And it just, I don't give a shit because I love being in it. Like after I beat it, I immediately have just been like dropping in and like working on speed running stuff for it. Like doing secrets, doing sequence breaks. Um, it's just so well thought out. I, an absolute master class of Metroidvania design. I, I love that game so much. It's my Me, new, I like, play it. it's my new, like go to Metroid instead of zero mission. Brian, have you not played it? No. Huh. I just doesn't play baby games. Have. Yeah, I don't play baby games. He only plays mature games for mature gamers like himself in his number three spot. Is Honey Pop. <laughs> it's what actually Forza. Uh, for the, I mean, for the stuff I've already said before, I think even playing on the Xbox One version, the visuals still look amazing, and I'm not even doing like a cloud thing with it. Um, it feels really nice to play like i do just like hopping in to a, a new thing my new favorite dream car a drink cup <laughs> like coontash and just Fucking cruising Lamborghini. around it's like i will set like a waypoint just really far away and you know follow it uh the soundtrack is kind of lacking if I had something yeah. I had to say negative it's, about it it's got fucking Montero in it no it's industry baby that's the one it's got it's one got little nonsense something. I honestly, I turn the radio off and put my Spotify on. Yeah, it's it's like, oh man, 
remember like in the Xbox 360 days when you could like download music to your hard drive and play it in the background of your game man that or was good stuff. even better yeah. you could plug your zoom into it and it <laughs> would do the same thing remember in the xbox one days where forza horizon 4 had a dedicated groove music integration where you could sign in with your groove account and stream <laughs> music that way good times I was yeah, playing it was uh... once while playing dead rising and i paused it for a cutscene, and i realized it did not keep like it silenced the in-game audio <laughs> even when you paused the music so i had to stop the music in order to hear what was happening and by then the cutscene was over halfway over incredible Classic. yeah good game i third third best of this year for me hunter what is for you the third best of 2021 i just gotta say this whole time i've been trying really hard not to say 2022 and i have fucking nailed it and i'm really fucking proud of myself <laughs> well you Until just now. ruined the surprise i'm just i'm fucking, fucking the curtain just... comes back and it's nailed ugly it. back here nailed it. hunter what's your number three my number three is near numbers because yeah. it turns out near one is still good and then they changed the combat to be faster. So that was my biggest complaint about Near One is that how slow shit was sometimes. I like Near. Can you still ride pigs? You can. I Good. should That's all fucking I need. finish you that can, game. You can finally drift boars in a stable frame rate. <laughs> well, I don't like it anymore then. <laughs> I, I liked everything I played of that game. And then no, it's just a stable frame rate. You're fucking. Fine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> did not finish it. I didn't even make it to the fucking time skip. I don't. I do well, not know why. You or maybe you, or maybe you did and you forgot because you skipped. I, I fucking, oh. I, I liked what I played. Five years go by in a flash. Only the prequel to literally my favorite game ever. <laughs> that means you didn't even make it out of the tutorial then. There's oh, a time is, skip is there. that really considered the? Oh, yeah. I mean, I made it through <laughs> that time skip. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's like it's weird. It's like you're just in this like bombed out building. I don't see why people like this game so much. Yeah, nothing happens. Just <laughs> things just kind of keep attacking. Yeah, and... What the fuck? He kicked a book away. I don't get it. Jason, what's what's uh, what's your book kicker of the year? So my top three, similar to what you're saying, my top three definitely has fluctuated, and I I still feel like any of the like these three could be in any order. I think the one thing holding my number three from being my number one is if it was just didn't have some spooky parts. Uh. <laughs> cause like, cause like I'm not a big Resident Evil fan. I have it's not like I've played all of them. I've played four a couple times. I've played five, like one and a half times. And then that's it other than this one. I, I played like, two hours of seven and I was too big of a baby but I think this one if this one was a little more accessible to me and then I could like pick it up and turn it on whenever I feel like and play it then I think it might have pushed to my number one and I still have like half the game left so it could completely tank or it could end up actually being my favorite game if, once I finish it but just the fact that like I never really want to play it like late at night I don't want to play it like by myself <laughs> because I am kind of a baby with spooky, spooky horror games like that. But if it was just all of the not spooky parts, I think it would have been my number one. But it just has like the thing holding me back from playing, which is why I've over the course of how long have I been borrowing? This You've game? had it since like July, like six months <laughs> since January. <laughs> and I'm and I'm like six and a half hours into it, maybe at this point. And most of that has been in the last two or three weeks if it helps you're you're past all the scary bits no and i know but it's but it's even just like random little like jump scares that games like four and five didn't really have like just like a loud noise or like oh shit there's a pig a pig that scares you or just like a bad guy that's really easy to kill but he like jumps up in your face outside of the window just little jump scares that I don't think add any quality to the game, but maybe I'm just not the right person. If they just didn't have that and just let me do the puzzles and find search for shit and then kill some bad guys here and there, I think it'd be a lot better. But I, I still think it's a really enjoyable game and I'm glad I didn't give up on it because I almost gave up and just like gave it back to you after playing like two hours of it because the beginning is uh, not great. But 
it's yeah i, I think it's pretty solid i i think that game it it does because like seven is firmly like a spooky game and they they I mean, know yeah, they want to do that and they do doesn't that, seven but... like not even have any like lethal combat like you it, can't actually kill anything it, it does it, I, I won't dwell on it it does but barely um whereas like this is firmly an action game and i really like when resident evil does action. Oh, yeah it's it's way more four than it but, is seven, but it still has some seven in yeah, it. Yeah, it's got enough seven into it. Yeah, and I, I, I don't, I wish it didn't because I think it would be better as just being four. Yeah, and they should have had Leon be the main character, but it's fine. Always. I mean, you can <laughs> say that about any video game. You are small time. You're small time. Your, your hand your comes fucking, off. Your right hand comes off. That is so good. <laughs> where's so good. Where's going? Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> it's the best boy because um, yeah i would say this one does not have any good lines like those but it does Ethan still has some more is just shit. like a comedy of errors himself yeah he's a big um, old bitch ass baby there's yeah, one is, good line and he's, but it's and like he's, right and he seems and he end. just seems stupid he seems dumb as shit. oh geez but not in like the way that like leon's dumb where he doesn't know what sex is <laughs> ethan's just like a dummy Leon has lived in a house his entire life and has never been outside. <laughs> um, raised on sitcoms. My number two, um, so look, a bad game. Halo Reach was really fucking good. What right? does that have to do with this? And then <laughs> Bungie went and did Destiny. And Destiny's got its flaws, but I still Destiny like. Destiny was really bad. With, I still like some Destiny. I, I'm I'm getting excited for the Witch Queen expansion in February. That'll be fun. Um, but another studio was then given the Halo IP, three four three Industries. It was an in-house Microsoft studio, and they put out Halo Four. And Halo Four was, while a very pretty game for the Xbox 360, fucking bad. Holy. fuck fuck it was bad um i don't think i ever touched it so then they, they made two discs then Ooh. the next thing that happens is That's the xbox one launches and to try to get their system to sell microsoft does one of the just the absolute just no-brainer moves they are going to put a remastered collection of all of the halos on the xbox one um including a like all new reskin remaster of halo 2 and then it didn't and, work. 343 did that and the whole thing was fucking busted um absolutely shits on the legacy of microsoft's most important franchise and they get it fixed eventually but like years it, later yeah, way too late. late um and why did it take them so long to fix it because they were working on halo 5 um that's a game which yeah halo 5 guardians i think halo 5 guardians which has like a couple neat ideas in the multiplayer but that's the most positive thing i can say about it but it is overall quite fucking bad um the first one to, not to i have forgot it existed until you just said that. they first yeah didn't have couch co-op uh they make buck a spartan which he deserves um because he's great but uh it's pretty fucking bad and it does some things to the story that are like oh man uh, what the fuck are you gonna do with that which brings us to um, 343, of course, saying that they're going to make another fucking Halo game. Because if you're Microsoft, uh, of course you're going to make another fucking Halo game. This gets announced um, 2018, I think? 2017, maybe? It got announced a fucking while ago. Um, and some footage comes out for it. And I got to say, I think uh, the world of gaming has kind of moved past Halo. I think that while Halo is important, I think we've kind of moved on from it. But they release a trailer for it, and it looks pretty shitty, all things considered. Um, but you got a grapple hook in it. It's like, that's cool. But that game looks really fucking bad, and the internet kind of tears it apart. Um, so then, like, about a month before the launch of the console that this was going to be the only launch title for they delay the game a year um not a great fucking sign master chief's hands were real small yeah you got small hands <laughs> um so then what is it maybe october of 2021 rolls around and they do a they september october they they release a trailer for the multiplayer and it's the first thing I see out of this game that I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, you know what? That actually, that 
that looks fun. Like, I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but that looks really fucking fun. Not too long later, they do the beta for Halo. Uh, Halo beta is a longstanding tradition, and I hopped in and I fucking played it because I'm all, I'm so deep in Microsoft's asshole that they fucking give me whatever I want at this point. And God fucking damn it. Um, they did it. They fucking did it. They made um, a playable Halo multiplayer. And not just a playable Halo multiplayer, uh, they made the best Halo multiplayer that has ever existed. Um, they then, one fine Monday, just op- like three weeks before the game was set to be out, they're just like, oh yeah, hey, we're, we're just going to release the multiplayer early. And um, I hop in and I play it. And sure enough, like the beta uh, had shown me, it is extremely incredible. Um, it is some of the best multiplayer I have played for any game in a long time. It makes me feel like I'm playing Reach. Or, really, it doesn't even make me feel like playing Reach because it doesn't load. It just makes it feel like I'm playing Halo 3 again. Um, they do so many smart things from every single angle. That game has like four or five maps in it, but it doesn't even matter because they nailed the fundamentals so well. Um, I Whatever, they can add maps to it. They can add game types and shit they have since added the proper like lobbies and swat and all of the things i need um i have already completed the battle pass for the multiplayer um it's it is an absolutely sublime experience i genuinely did not think they were capable of doing it and i also think this was kind of halo's last shot like if they fuck this up then halo's done um the reason halo infinite is my number two is that the campaign kind of fucking sucks. I like the uh, campaign. Okay, thank God. I, I was about to have it, some questions, it, and you've kind of swayed me a little bit. It's fine. It's 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 totally okay. Like, the fund, again, much like the multiplayer, the fundamentals are there. It is fun to grappling hook around and shoot things. It's fun to go into, like, one of these arenas, be hooking around fucking shooting dudes, and that's super good. That is the only mission in a 15, 16-hour <laughs> campaign. Oh, yeah. Just um, go to go to okay, place, kill okay. all the dudes. I'm I'm on I'm on your but, I'm on and, board with your opinions now. That more. thing is fine and that's fun to do. And I completed the whole thing. Does anyone care if I talk about the story? No, because really. that game's no, not ahead. fun okay. at all. So okay. I'm never gonna play that campaign. Who here has seen the movie, the seminal film Beer Fest? Yes. I have. See, I Hunter have. knows where I'm going with this because I already said it to him. Um so one of the things I'm that intrigued. happens in the course of Halo's, like the, the newer, the new trilogy story is that Cortana, Master Chief's little robot in his head, his girlfriend, goes rampant and starts breaking down and basically does the thing that all AIs do in fiction, where they realize that the best thing is they have to kill all organic life in the world. Um, Cortana essentially gains access to this huge forerunner network of weapons and goes rampant and is like getting ready to fucking destroy all of humanity that's where halo 5 ends halo 6 picks up on this zeta halo um and you kind of find out through the course of this like cortana has already been killed they have already dealt with and done all the stuff to cortana and you have a new robot lady in your uh, helmet called weapon she looks exactly like Cortana, sounds like Cortana. All she she is she's Cortana, but she's like very perky and upbeat and you know, fun, like, oh chief, yeah, let's go do the stuff. You know, ah, we're, Chief, we're having fun here. Um, like, oh, they don't seem to like you very much, Chief. Like she's very perky and upbeat. Um you discover that her entire purpose was to delete and kill Cortana, which uh she was able to do, but it she had her like memory wiped you find out also that what she is is she is legitimately just a copy of Halo 1 Cortana. Like, full stop, they just copied her. So it, 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 she seems and acts like Halo 1 Cortana because she's literally Halo 1 Cortana. This then causes your new AI to have an existential crisis because she's like, oh, fuck, I'm going to kill everything. Um, she doesn't want to do that. You get some friction between, like, Master Chief being ready to delete her several, several times because she's like getting a little too curious about this new Halo. And he's like, okay, I'm fucking, I'm ready to do this. She gets all pissed off. You're going to fucking delete me, you dick. And then by the end of it, she's begging for him to delete her because she has this like weird guilt over what her copy did. Chief goes on to, you know, kind of explain like, it's not your fault, you know, all of that shit. Um, And at the end of it, you know, her and Chief are teaming up. Don't worry, Jason, I'm going somewhere with this. This is all built for a certain thing. Those are good beads, though. 
Um, it, you get to the end of the game, and then you learn. There's this side character called the pilot. He sucks. I don't care, but he like reveals his name to Chief. It's fucking something. Doesn't matter. And then he also asks like, oh, you know, AI, what's what's your actual name? He kind of just called you Weapon this whole game, and she's like, huh. I uh, I guess I don't have a name. And she looks at Chief and she's like, do you think she would mind? And she's and then she's like, not at all. So we now have Cortana has been killed because they that whole rampancy storyline wasn't going anywhere. Chief has a new AI in his head. Her name is Cortana. She acts like Cortana used to because Landfill has been killed, replaced with his brother, who would also like to be called Landfill um to honor the previous ai and everything's back to normal and they desperately needed to do something to reset that story because they had no fucking idea they were where they were going with it and i think like functionally speaking this story achieves that goal but it's pretty fucking bad uh how they go about doing it but i think that it now leaves them in an okay spot to maybe do something else um, I really hope they add more into that campaign. This is supposed to be like the platform for the next 10 years of Halo. Hmm. And I think that the bones are super good. It feels so good to grappling hook around and do shit, but every mission's exactly the fucking same. And yeah. okay, so it's it's your number two because you like Halo multiplayer. Yeah, no, yeah, it is it, the the thing that is stopping it from being my number one is the campaign. Okay. Um, I, I cannot in very, good conscience. I've been very concerned with your taste in video games for a while because of how much you've said Halo Infinite was good. It's <laughs> it's purely because like it, it it is my number two in spite of the campaign. Okay. Um, that's different. I just I'm I'm really bad at Halo multiplayer, but I played a few hours of the campaign. It's really bad and boring. I think I've played and 70 think, hours of multiplayer. And I don't think I would have played as much of the campaign as I did without the grappling hook. Oh mm. yeah, no. Without without the grappling hook, that game there would be nothing. Yeah, that game doesn't um, work without the grappling hook. That makes this a lot. Okay, I'll say this makes this a lot less divisive. But I just haven't even played the multiplayer because I'm bad at Halo multiplayer. And I I think that if you you don't like Halo multiplayer, this isn't going to make you suddenly like Halo multiplayer. But if you really it's like Halo I just 3, like it. I'm just bad at it. Then <sighs> I was always a Call of Duty guy. Yeah, and and like the time to kill is maybe a little bit shorter than Halo Three, but like it's it feels That's like nice. Halo, and it feels modernized. Like you can aim down sights with certain things, which like aiming down sights, if you get hit, it takes you out of sight. So like you can legitimately do suppressing fire in this game with like the assault rifle. So if someone's trying to snipe, but if you can like peg them with the fucking assault rifle, it'll knock them out of that. Like mm-hmm. so many just nuanced good intelligent like multiplayer design decisions fucking grappling hooking an item to your hand swinging around the stage like it's it's just so smart and it feels so good to do it feels balanced it's it's just phenomenal it feels like i'm playing halo 3 2 and i cannot believe that they were able to pull it off and they they needed to like this was their last shot so i'm sorry that i just spent 15 minutes on fucking halo infinite Ryan. I mean, I was going to say, it seems weird to start an in-depth, comprehensive Halo history on Halo 4, so we should probably, why don't you just start at Halo 1? Yeah, yeah, I guess we could, no. we, I mean, really, at that point, like, we got to do Reach, and I mean, really, I kind of should do Marathon first. Yeah, like, we should talk really about talking. Marathon. And yeah. then talk about the invention of bungee cables. Do we need yeah, to do ODS, bungees. Halo 3 ODST? And well, Halo yeah, Wars. otherwise hey, look, ODST the is. ODST whips. ODST kicks ass. Um they oh uh, and i guess some other things that happened to the story they kill every other spartan except the odst crew nice uh, like they nuke unsc base on or cortana does they kill the us unsc infinity where all these new spartans were like they reset the fucking world back to basically halo 3 nice. um, and it's great is the last level a super fun uh, mongoose ride the so there, if there was a number four moment or sequence, it was going to be the ninth Halo Infinite mission, which admittedly is quite fun. It's called The Road, and it is the vehicle mission. Um, we're basically just like the title. You have to get through this just, you have to go down this road all the way to the fucking like end of the thing. And it's just the mute, it's where the music kicks in. You're in the fucking vehicles, you're doing Halo shit, and you're just, it's Master Chief clearing a fucking path through the, the banished. But can um, you do Cinco? You could. <laughs> I again, I 
I, I hope they can do, they add some more to the campaign because like it's, it's fun. It's really fun to grapple hook around. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun to do that shit. But every, the, the first mission you do is the same as the last one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they made some missteps with the campaign, but also I know how much development hell that game has been in. So I can kind of cut them some slack. And they, the multiplayer is so good, I don't give a shit. Like, I, I like a good Halo campaign. I really wish that this one was better, but they made the multiplayer so good that I will forgive it. Ryan. Okay, Ryan, yes. talk, what talk is for 20 minutes two? about Halo. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap, okay? I already did my Halo bit. Um, My number two is, uh, it's Little Nightmares 2. They, like, I love the first one. Um, They they made some changes in this one that I think maybe puts it more in line with, like, an inside or a limbo with the uh, little more trial and error how you do the puzzles, stuff like that. Um, And the first one's so good. Yeah. And I the think once puzzle so good. <laughs> once puzzles. I swing on them sausages, boy. You got to make the sausages first, though. But I like, um, even like despite those changes, I, I think it's still just a super solid game. It's super fun. It sells some surprises in it, and it's different enough from the first one that it doesn't feel like it's treading the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, it was it was cool. I finished it up pretty recently and i think it ended pretty strong there were some you know frustrating areas because they do lean a little bit more into yeah. the trial and error aspect of it but i think, I think my think... complaints about it are fairly picky i think it's mm. a good game i i think I switching my brain the over vibe on your opinion on this game all year i was really <laughs> surprised to see it in your top five <laughs> well because i think that's why i stopped playing it is earlier in the year i was just like well i didn't want to play a limbo like game i don't like those and then when i picked it up again i went in knowing that that's what it was and now i'm like oh shit you know now that like i'm expecting it to be that and a little different than how the first one was i was able to really jive with it yeah i think the trial and error thing is a a decent a a good chunk of why i didn't keep playing it Mm-hmm. It doesn't run the best on the Switch, that's for sure, but that hasn't stopped me from playing a number of other things. But it definitely has the, like, okay, I don't know how to get past this part. I have to run through this other 20 seconds of annoying dumb shit that I know how to get past to keep trying this part over and over again. I think that's why I quit playing it last time when I turned it on earlier today and I, like, walked out of the bathroom and ran down the hallway of arms and then have to try and, like, get past a couple like headless body things crawling around on the floor i did it like three times i was like oh yeah i think i tried this like 20 times <laughs> and didn't know what i was doing wrong and i'm pretty sure it's impossible so this is why i stopped playing it i'm gonna stop playing it again you guys calling this like more limbo like is actually kind of selling me on it okay, have, you it like, would. have you played the first one I don't. I mean, I've dabbled with it. I don't. I. I don't think it's like a terrible game, but it doesn't do anything for me. I mean, it's definitely in the limbo vein. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's like limbo, but I. It, it's good. I play and it's like oh, I really wish I was playing like limbo right now. Yeah, and I think yeah, I don't. Know. I, I think, think the like I think bosses Little Nightmares one. I think I might like more than limbo. I agree. And inside. Me too. I still thoroughly like limbo and inside though. I mean, I maybe I'll fuck with two. Like this is this is the most compelling kind of case I've heard for. Number two, and I think like the bosses or the main monsters in this one, they feel a little bit more intense. Like they're doing a lot more with like thinking it's over, and then it's just like, haha, fuck mm. you, we're doing something else. But no, it, I do think it's, it's good if they if they like make a little nightmares three, I'll play it even if I haven't finished this one. I don't really care. Yeah, I'll keep playing little nightmares games. Hunter, <sighs> will yeah. you keep playing your number two? Yes. Because I haven't beaten it, and that's the only reason it's not my number one. Uh, and it's Shimagami Tensei Five. Because <laughs> uh, turns out they made another new good. They made another good Shimagami Tensei game. Who'd have thought? Not me. <laughs> I'm, waiting fucking, for, I'm waiting for Dash to say. Something. I fucking beat that game, so you would have someone to back you up when we could talk about it this year, and you didn't even fucking finish it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly surprised you played it at all. I like the look. I like the Persona games. Like I really like Persona. Like I legitimately really, really like Persona. And I, I think that like the trappings of Shin Megami Tensei on paper 
like I like the 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 combat and like the dungeon crawling and the demon fusion elements of Persona. Like full stop. I I, I enjoy that. I think that Shin Megami Tensei is a fun combat system, like fundamentally, <laughs> uh, within the context of JRPGs. Um, <sighs> this isn't a poo poo party. There is that's a, a that's, that's a not fun, the point fun of party. This. <laughs> I talked to a Cerberus when I had Hydra in my party and Hydra popped out and he's like, Hey, I'm your brother. I was like, Oh shit. That's so, it's so nice to meet you, man. I can't believe it took until the fifth game for this to happen. It's it's still got sick demon designs. And then yes. Hydra was like, what do you mean fifth game? And he was like, don't worry about it. How are you doing? I like the demon talking. I like the part where the influencer who becomes a born again Christian teleports behind someone to uh, to to attack them. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I like the part at the beginning where that uh, influencer bonks his head because he's taller than the average Japanese person. Hunter, I'm not quite getting it. So if you could tell us the entire history of Shin Megami Tensei. Okay. He, he, like, he, okay. You, you so indulge way... me, so I can't, I legitimately like, can't even. Yeah, like, so I like, way after. back when. I would prefer if we did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some author wrote a story and Atlas and Atlas got hired to make the video game of it. And they were like, you know what? This is some cool ideas. Why don't we like make our own, but different and so they did. And that was Shin Megami Tensei instead of regular Megami Tensei. And then they made... Man, there's been a lot of fucking spinoffs and shit. There have that. been so many spinoffs. <laughs> was... There was a more kid-friendly version that's more like Pokemon called Demi Kids. Ooh, I want to play that. I'm when are they going to make, when are they gonna make a button. Rocket Jack Frost? Like uh, Rocket Slime. They First of all, it's, it's Shin Megami Kart not... is... That's, that's if they the did though they would probably use frost ace as the main character since he's Obviously. like a superhero jack frost jason what's your number two is it frost ace or is it jack frost uh yes both of those um <laughs> my number two is a game that has two in the title that's not little nightmares two and it's, it takes two. Oh yeah Am I the last one to talk about it? Ryan has a number one. Okay, so I'll just, I won't say anything. Wait, did Ryan can talk about No, talk about it. Is it? I mean, oh, I don't man, really that dude looks sick, to... Hunter. We've talked, yeah. we've, we've talked about it a lot. I mean, it's just, it was, a, it was a good experience. I still at some point would like to replay it as the other character that I haven't done yet. I was very I, surprised. The daughter. Game also was like to have the, I would like to have the will to do that. I would like to want to do that. Yep. <laughs> I'd, I'd be like insane to, I'd in like every mini game out. except one. Ryan and I seem uh, fairly just, even most of the time. We were pretty the even till game. till like near the end. Yeah. What were you even about? The mini the games. The mini games. Oh, I mean, yeah, I was pretty over ability on that one. Yeah, the only mini game I lost was the uh whack a Cody thing. That was a good one. I think I was pretty good at that one. I think that's like yeah, think the first one. one. It's good. It takes two is a good game. Some might call it the fifth best game. Some might call it the second. Um. So it's that time. Uh, it's game of the. It's the best game of the year time. You better talk less about this than you did about Halo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's it's Forza Horizon Five. <laughs> Hey, there's been five games. Let's hear about them. Yeah, it's uh, actually there's been more. We should probably make the distinction yeah, sorry, between you need this to, and you need to say the lore. Yeah, you got to you yeah. the, the prequel series. Uh, Which old Japanese man wrote this one? I I love. I have always loved the Forza Horizon games. I bring them up it, literally in the game of your conversation every single year in some capacity. And this is finally the one where not only does this do some very specific things that improve upon the previous iterations. I was. I was a little cold on Forza Horizon 4, but I I still like it. These are still really fun games fundamentally, but like 5 goes back to all of the things I really enjoyed about 3, just with the diverse biomes and kind of all that stuff. While also looking dropped at gorgeous on the modern consoles um, and also being kind of a weaker year, uh, Forza, Forza was really kind of poised to finally, finally take the crown. And it's probably the only time it's ever going to happen again. 
Mm. Um, not to say like, again, these, these, my one, two and three are very like, I could kind of swap them around and be pretty happy with it. Um, but whereas Halo kind of has that campaign dragging it down, Horizon 5 has really no bad parts in it. Like it's it's as fun in the first hour as it is in my like fucking 30th. I think I put in like 30 hours so far. Mm. And, it's and also... the map is so good. I think yeah. with the Horizon games, like it's all going to depend on like the location and the map. And they and at least did one that interested me now. Four being in England sucked. Um, mm -hmm. There was no diversity to that fucking map. Whereas three in Australia and now five in Mexico that is just a huge division of biomes and like i it was cool that it was free on game pass but these are the games that like i buy the hundred dollar edition of this game every time they put one out and being able to do that upgrade just for 60 bucks and still like get the stuff or 50 bucks or whatever it was just and we'll still get in the game on game pass is really cool because i know i'm gonna play all the fucking content um i'll like i will continue to play that game off and on until the next one happens um which i'm not sure when that'll be because playground is now doing fable um forza horizon 5 kind of coming out before motorsport 8 was a little bit of a surprise mm -hmm. and hey cool whatever i i like the motorsport games don't get me wrong but I'd much rather have a new horizon so i'll probably just be playing this off and on until the next one comes out and then i'll do it all over again and it will be in my top 10 somewhere <laughs> um yeah i won't get into it uh ryan what's your number one Number one, I've talked about it a lot, uh, infamously, famously. Infamous. It's not it's, it takes two. It's number software. one is it takes two. That was it takes two is just the thing I had the most fun with this year. Um, I love doing co-op stuff. I love three D platformers and the fact that like it changed the gameplay every level, every area, and every single one of them was good. Like there I had were... nothing negative to say about that game, and it was like. A roller coaster with writing and just i don't know there, so much about it just clicked with me um but yeah it was the most fun thing i played all year there were so many like 3d platformers that came out this year and it is the best one of them just <laughs> without question mm -hmm. <laughs> like fuck you psychonauts fuck you ratchet and clank like nah let joseph Forrest show you how it's done and it was it was just fun playing with a buddy it was like hanging out doing crazy things they they had enough in there like the mini games were fun to mess around with like a little like break in the gameplay even just like traversing the environments like yeah. i'm thinking of, like the the ice skating one where is it you're just ice skating around like yeah. they're, you're not really doing anything but it's just, it's fun to just like move around and interact with and look at shit like i i think we we beat that game in like three sessions I think so, and yeah. Every single time it was like we have to stop because we have something to do or I need to go to bed or something. But it's like yeah. I never wanted to stop playing it. Like and we it would always just be like, hey, you know, do you have time to you know let's do some more it takes two? And we just knock that shit out. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a truly remarkable game against all odds. Great shit. Excellent game. And like it's it, I got, it's one everyone played it it's we got everyone on board for it because we played it and they were like hey you guys should probably fucking check this out yeah <laughs> and not only did everyone play it but everyone enjoyed it mm -hmm. except for a lot of people that review video games fuck them <laughs> really don't care they can't play cuphead yeah i've seen a i, I i've seen a number of people that just bashed it because I mean, the writing is stupid and I it think reviewed like get past that. okay like but it got like 70s yeah hmm. like it's it reviewed Weird. fine bunch of contrarians yeah. out there fucking great shit oh, it definitely can, it's contrarians that like feel like every game needs to have a deep story or something like yeah but the story I, in this game is stupid but, the but whatever is very like, enjoyable but also the writing is good like the fucking story in mass effect sucks shit out an ass but the <laughs> writing in it's really good like i what do you mean they're rapers doing the, the, the elusive man's in cahoots with the creeper but like the shit they do to cutie is incredible like that is inspired that just all of the dialogue throughout those two people motherfucking dr hakeem yeah incredible. i think incredible <laughs> I think it's people who are going into it and they're wanting like, I think the game is really subversive with its writing and that like people are going in expecting like, oh, we're going to go through and we're going to, you know, like, get them back together. and It's going to be clean. Like they're it's expecting a comedy game. 
Yeah. So they're expecting yeah. this story of like how it's going to go. And if it goes differently, they're like, oh, the writing's bad, actually, because it doesn't follow. So let me talk to you all plot. about a little movie called Matrix 4 Resurrections. <laughs> the It Takes the Two of Movies. Matrix. People don't know what they want. Hunter, what's your number one? <laughs> My Matrix. number one is Me Troy Dude. Oh, yeah. Because that's a good fudging game. I still and, should probably play that. And the, I meant to say this earlier when Dash was gushing about it, but I, my cat was on my belly and I got distracted. It, it happened. Um, I'm in there. Uh, just with how fast Samus moves in it, it's you know not only is it really nice, zippy, responsive, but I noticed like two and a half hours in or whatever that like whenever there's a ledge that's just one block high. Yep. In old Metroid games, you'd have to like jump over it. And because, I still do yeah. out of reflex. Yeah, but in this one, Samus just climbs it automatically, so you can just keep running. Forward. So great. And just like when I noticed that, I was like, oh shit, this might it's like that little thing was enough for me to be like, wait a second, this might be really good. Some something's and going as, on here. As and someone like, who hasn't played other Metroids, going back and playing older ones, that might really bug the shit out of me. Like, yeah, as someone who has played Zero Mission since playing Dread, it feels very slow. As someone who speed runs Metroid Zero Mission, it feels very slow. Um, I like the like, Emmys. I like, <laughs> I like everything about that fucking game. It's I like how I th- I like how challenging they made it. The bosses yeah. feel like bosses. Um, sure, I'm going to die a few times. That's fine. It's a fucking boss fight. I don't want to be clearing bosses first time every time. That, I, it feels good when I beat one. Um, they kind of did it with the two remake, but they gave Samus like a personality in this one, which I know Dash, men- Dash mentioned this one specifically, but just how tired she, just how like tired of the shit she samus looks when craig shows up she's got to kill craig again and she's so fucking sick of it this is like the fifth time i've killed craig and i have to do it again um i guess the the story's stupid what do you mean? It's Samus fucking video gets, game. It's fucking we stupid. Said, it's oh, fucking every video stupid. game has a dumb story. But also, who cares about the story? I know, and that's the thing, but like it concludes the Metroid saga. Read a, read a book. It just oh, <laughs> don't mind if I do. Play, Here's play the Metroid the, story. Play, play the video games that Ryan likes if you want to. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Here's the Metroid I story. Do. Some birds made something bad, and then they all died. Bird lady raised by birds killed those things. Okay, but turns what out the not, birds turns out not all the birds were dead, and they're gonna use the bird lady to what they were to do the thing they were originally gonna use the bad shit they made for. So what if but then bird of lady stops a fucking the like robot that's pursuing you? It's a really annoying book guy, and he just comes in at the worst possible moments to harass you and you have to run away from him instead what if every time you beat a boss ridley shows up and is like hey metroid <laughs> hey, you're doing great girl he <laughs> leaks into every game metroid <laughs> dread's so fucking of the year. i i i'm i'm genuine i am in genuine awe that they were able to make such a good metroid game i'm even more surprised that jason enjoyed it <laughs> but, but what jason, did he enjoy more what you enjoy the most than metroid dread I mean, my number one game is Metroid. Yeah, he hasn't said it yet, so I know what his number one game is. <laughs> and, Which really uh, surprises the fuck out of me. I mean, yeah, I, I Jeez, if I hadn't if I hadn't played it if I hadn't played it just to try and fill out my list a little more, it takes two would have ended up my number one like pretty confidently. And these two are pretty interchangeable, but I mean, the one thing I'll give Metroid Dread is it was just like. One of the, I mean, it was the only game this year that has the feeling of, okay, I just played for like an hour or so and I just saved, but like, what's in the next room? Yeah, what if you yeah. Just went a I just further. I just want to peek ahead just so I'm like gonna, I know I'm, when I come I'm gonna, back. Yeah, no, exactly. It's I'm gonna peek ahead and it's like mm, I'm gonna peek ahead to 14 more rooms. Yeah, and then I'll go to bed. Well, and, I'm already this far. I should find the same. And it's got save points everywhere. So like, yeah. And this and yeah, this game definitely had that. Definitely the only game of this year 
that had that for me. And like, I, I don't get me wrong, I will never replay it because I don't replay games almost at all. They have to be like top 10 all time favorite games for me to play a game more than once, like a campaign. But I put more time into it in the brief time I've played it than I expected. Like, I thought I would play it and dick around, get a third to a half of the way through and then shelf it, not play it for four days and never touch it again. But I will say I have successfully stopped playing this game for more than two days on multiple occasions and gone back to it, which I can't say about many video games in the last like five years. That's a big compliment. (laughs) Try to finish it out. It's it's got a pretty fun final boss. Uh, Yeah. I mean, when I turned on my switch today to play a little nightmares Two. Uh, Metroid was still running and I almost just played that instead. <laughs> <laughs> but I checked to make sure I remember where I was and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm right outside of like a big boss fight. And then I hopped out to play Little Nightmares 2 for five minutes. No, I, I intend to try and finish it if I'm capable. I do remember the boss fight that I am in right now. I was doing very poorly in. I only, tried it it like, I only tried it like twice and I died like very Which fast. one is it? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's my favorite one. You jump you jump up into a little uh, crawly space, and then you go into a little purple box, and then you hit the bomb button, and then it shoots you to the room. Is That's it a big guy it. that charges at you? Hold up. Is it a big green idiot that's chained to the wall? Oh, no, he's uh, way that. I think it might be the the experiment Z fifty seven or something. Oh, in the like the big goo room? Maybe. Are you purple yet? What do you mean? Are you I go so and, probably I can, not? Are you I, is Samus purple yet? I don't. I haven't played the game in fucking a couple weeks. Yeah, but I didn't purple. look. At the, I can't. I, I, don't, purple. I can purple. go in cold stuff. Now, yeah, I don't think you're purple yet. Damn, you got a ways to go, actually. I don't know. Okay, but is Metroid Dread good? Who Game thought? of the year. Game of the year. Some might call it Game of the year. Uh, and that brings us to a close on the actual Game of the Year. We will do one more session of our uh, kind of like wrap-up categories, like look to the future categories, but this will do it for Game of the Year. And with that, I will see you next time.